Hi, we are with uh, Gustavo Goretti. Gustavo Goretti is respected as easily the most decorated investigative journalist in the Latin America. I am not sure about that. I am I mean, sure about this. I am. <clears throat> the thing is, when you are old enough, mm -hmm. uh, when you have been working for many years, mm -hmm. you're bound to get some uh, recognitions. A small trivia about him, he was abducted by the Peruvian army then uh, in 1992, uh, was exiled because of his crit critical reporting. Now, uh, what makes you pursue a story, even when there is a risk of being targeted, uh, being framed, being uh, charges fabricated on you? Uh, for example, in the case of uh, this uh, Maltese journalist um, Daphne, who lost her life for investigative journalism, uh, in your case as well, where you were abducted by the Peruvian army and then exiled, etc. So when everything seems to be targeted at you, what is still, <coughs> what is the driver? that makes you go behind the story? Because it has to be done. Mm -hmm. Because uh, if you essentially submit to fear, mm -hmm. then uh, the story will not be told. The truth will, be, will remain hidden. Mm -hmm. Some crooks will remain impugned and they will remain in power. A false version of events will be told. People will be robbed. Their rights will be violated. Democracy then uh, will become more and more of a sham. And uh, when, when there is some danger in the story, quite often mm -hmm. it is because the story is important. Wow. It is because the story is important to many people. Mm -hmm. and, That's and, a great statement. Huh? That's a yeah. great statement. Yeah. And, 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 and then, uh, if it is important, mm -hmm. and, uh, and it is dangerous because it is important Correct. For, for the people, mm -hmm. then, of course, you, might, you must make up your mind and then decide if you want to do that. In my case, I was offered for the first time to do a difficult investigative story in 1982. So think about that, how many years ago. It was about uh, a very powerful individual in the shadows who there, there were saying that there, there, there were lots of rumors that he, that he was a, an important drug trafficker mm -hmm. and that with his drug money he was sort of <clears throat> becoming a danger to Peruvian democracy, which at the time was uh, very weak and recent. And the journalist that had been in charge of the investigation was threatened. And he dis uh, decided to, to abandon the investigation. Mm -hmm. Then my editor offered me to, 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 to take it. I was covering the Shining Path Insurgency, so I had enough problems uh, to, to, to deal with at the time, but he offered me to, to, to do that investigation and he offered to help me because he said, if you are threatened and you don't publish, you're done. And um, then um, I asked him for a couple of days to think it over. And I thought uh, profoundly about all of that. Um, I mean, I was very realistic about the, 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 all the, the, the problems, the perils, and, and I knew that once you cross the river, there is no going back. There is no going back. So um, my then uh, very, very young daughter, my then fiance, now my wife, participated in the discussion and the decision, and then um, we decided that I will do it. 
And then I crossed the river and never, never looked back. Every now and then, governments try to muffle uh, the descent in the name of sedition, in the name of uh, national interest, right? Yes. Um, so to voice your opinion uh, against the government, what should a common man do? Which doors to be knocked? Well, uh, people should always understand that democracy is a fragile system of government. That throughout the history of humankind, it's only in a small window of time and in a very few countries that democracy has flourished. Mm -hmm. That experience, mm -hmm. however limited, tells us nevertheless that democracy is the best way of government. As long as people put their effort in improving it. So there are many authors, alleged authors of this phrase, of, the, of this phrase, that the price of freedom is eternal vigilance. Mm -hmm. So um, you live, you come from the uh, most populous democracy in, in, in the world. Correct. And uh, a democracy which uh, confronts many problems, and, right. and now dissent among others, and, <laughs> and, and, and race relations. And so none of these problems are easy. Mm. The only way to confront them is by democratic means, by discussion, deliberation, debate, and but made all of them from the basic values of democracy, which should be always be tolerance. Tolerance to differences, tolerance to different ways of thinking, of living, and, and all of that. Uh, civilized uh, engagement into public affairs. And the decision to fight strongly the enemies of freedom, because uh, freedom has enemies. Always has, has had, and see, unfortunately it seems, it will continue to have them in the foreseeable future. So. To be brave in the defense of democracy, but at the same time to defend, to bravely defend uh, uh, principles of tolerance, openness, difference, dissent. This is the magic of democracy. Yeah, but then the civil unrest is normally top down. It's not the other way around. If you have a person or a government at the center who controls media, who tries to nationalize media, who tries to uh, tries to propagate in certain manner, mm -hmm. and then what do you do with that? Then when does a, where does the common man do, uh, go? Which doors uh, does he knock? Well, do sometimes it is government, the the one who does all the things that you have been describing. Yes, yes. Quite quite often it, yes, it is that. Yes, yes, yes. And as you know. Mm. The worst enemies of democracy, fascism, Nazism, mm. came to power through democracy. Mm. And uh, because of that, the democratic forces have to be always alert. Your ideal, uh, IDL, uh, and your kind of journalism actually, yes, it I takes on corrupt politicians, um, uh, uh, investigates crafts. Uh, probably looks at the nexus between the the narco money and politics, etc. But it does not speak about the growing menace as we were talking now about uh, nationalism and the right wing movement. There's not an article in your. No, we haven't. We are now investigating mm -hmm. as part of a hemispheric wide network of investigative journalists, and that is one of the great gifts of technology. Correct. Um, we're investigating the influence of ultra right-wing fundamentalist religious sects in, um, in Latin America, and the relationship with money laundering, in a few cases drug trafficking, and, and, and all of that. There is no saying that they have had, in many cases, mm. a profoundly unsettling effect on, on democracy mm. and on the kind of public discussion on, 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 on that matter. Mm. But um, we're going now to begin, uh, to, to begin tackling that. The only thing is we're a very small 
journalistic outfit were very small. And uh, a few years ago, we had to make a strategic decision. We were beginning to investigate the Lava Jato case, uh, originating from Brazil, but which we knew could have Latin American white and even some African and European kind of, of repercussions and extensions. We knew that the story would be crucial to uh, reveal, to uncover the extent and the way that corruption worked in, in, in our country. So we took a strategic decision to essentially concentrate all of our resources on that investigation. And we essentially forgot many other things where we were doing at the time. Because if there wasn't a concentration of effort, it would never come to any sizable results. In the process, we also came into a related investigation about corruption at the high levels of the judiciary. Uh, in, in, in Peru, and we did that, and it had, um, I mean, it had a tremendous effect. Both of them had a tremendous effect, and it helped very much to bring this investigation and the kind of reforms that took place to the state uh, in which we are now. When you are doing a story, so yes. one man's terrorist is the other man's freedom fighter. That's so, very old. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, very old, right? Yeah, yeah. So, when you're doing a story, the chances yeah. are that you may find that the methods used were wrong, but the reasons of taking up arms and militancy was not far removed. In the sense, probably their land was grabbed. Probably they were unjustly marginalized, and that is where they have chosen their path. In this scenario, how do you leave your bias? And how do you uh, balance yourself to see the other side? Well, I mean, I... I like I, say in I, case yes. of Shining Path? Yes. It may not be the case, but in India there is a Naxalite movement, right? I know about the Naxalites. I know about the relationship between the Naxalites and the Shining Path, Correct. and also the Maoist Nepalese and the... And, and the I, I cover the war, almost, uh, the internal war, Correct. almost Correct. from its inception. Correct. And the fact that I call it an, an internal war, and uh, makes me a target of attack because I, uh, it is supposed that I only have to uh, speak here about terrorists Correct. and nothing more than that. And to me, it was indispensable to understand in depth their motivations and who they were. Mm -hmm. I wrote a book about that. I read everything they, 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 they wrote. And believe me, sometimes it was very hard reading. Mm -hmm. because uh, the dogmatists are not good writers. Mm -hmm. and, uh, <laughs> and, 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 and then, uh, uh, of course, I had to do lots of investigations into guerrilla insurgencies, terrorist insurgencies, and, 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 and all of that, uh, into when uh, armed resistance can be legitimate. I mean, against the Nazis, for instance, was more than legitimate. Uh, but essentially, the thing is, uh, there, there are some, some things that make it very clear the difference. A, was there an alternative? Because almost always, if you choose the way of a struggle, it's going to be tragic for many, many people. It's going to be to, to bring great suffering, great tragic suffering for many, many innocent people. So, is there an alternative? Was there an alternative? Uh, are you choosing, uh, are you choosing the path of armed struggle because of A, you think it's, it's part of the loss of history and you have to respect the loss of history and you have to put aside all alternative of, of peaceful reform or because you think it's a religious mandate and you think you have to cleanse the world of heretics, if any of these conditions are made, it is a thing you must struggle against it. Because as long as there is a way of a peaceful resolution of a conflict, and sometimes the peaceful resolution is not as peaceful every, at every moment, but, um, and it might involve very strong protest. 
and it might necessitate a lot of courage to withstand repression. But as long as there is that possibility, you should take that. And what about the, the leaks and whistleblowers? What about their accountability? Yeah. More so, what about the legitimacy of such leaks and whistleblowers? Yes. Chances are that somebody is being paid off. Chances are that uh, you know, it may run with vested interest. How do you know that this leak and, uh, and the whistleblowing is for genuine reasons and not for covering somebody's vested interest? Uh, that, that's not the way I, 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 I deal with the problem. Mm -hmm. I, my experience mm -hmm. sort of teaches me, has mm -hmm. taught me, mm -hmm. that in very few cases, mm -hmm. people who decide to give you information are moved by pure philanthropy. I mean, or, or people who have been working as volunteers with Mother Teresa and then came to work in the society at large. In most cases, people have some specific interests, have an axe to grind, have uh, uh, something. So you really have to look at the information itself. Mm -hmm. You have to receive the information, examine the information, correlate it, mm -hmm. uh, disaggregate it, Deconstruct it, mm -hmm. reconstruct it, and then uh, see what it means. Excellent. Gustavo is six times judo champion of Peru. What is your takeaway? Was. Yeah. Was, was many years six ago. Six times judo champion in Peru. What is your takeaway from judo? That uh, the least important part. Mm -hmm. Uh, of judo was uh, the, the, the uh, tournament championships. It just was a part of a discipline that uh, took my, 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 my whole life. I began, I wish I had begun earlier, but I began practicing judo at the age of 15 years old, mm -hmm. uh, when it was practicing with very rigorous discipline and if you were not of Japanese ancestry, you were subject to even more rigorous discipline. Yeah. And uh, it taught me so many things. And uh, discipline, effort, to look for the right strategy to achieve the ends, to think about the, how valid those ends were, to, to know that persistence, discipline, hard work, training, but intelligent training, intelligent hard work would bring you unsuspected progress. Excellent. <clears throat> now, what about the, the moral and ethical duty of not releasing a story? If you have gone after a story and then you find that the story uh, may not really do good but harm the current government, may break down the current government, may break down the peace, may break down the stability. When do you decide or how do you decide that this story must be told to people because people have right to know or it's in the best interest of the nation and everybody concerned that the story is untold? It is, it doesn't happen often. It doesn't happen often. Correct. But it has happened once or twice over my pretty long career. Correct. And in most cases, it wasn't at the very high level of national interest or mm -hmm. international interest mm -hmm. or in the interest of human rights, but very concrete. Mm -hmm. I, without giving names or uh, uh, concrete cases, I'll tell you that once I was approached by a group of, uh, of soldiers mm -hmm. Uh, they were commandos, uh, elite forces, mm -hmm. and they had been uh, involved in a ferocious uh, firefight, mm -hmm. lasting a whole night under horrible conditions, the disadvantages, and they had performed heroically. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were then uh, relegated to, to, to a, a mil military hospital, but they were treated well despised and, 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 and essentially forgotten. Mm -hmm. I was approached by them 
Then I went as somebody who goes to visit people and, 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 and went to visit them. Mm. They came together, they were telling me this story when army I I intelligence came. We continued, n nevertheless, and then I went to interview the director of the military hospital and all of that. Mm. And uh, with all the information, I went to, 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 to write this story. Mm. And uh, next day, an old lady comes and um, she was an old lady from uh, the rural south where I lived for many years, so I know the accent, the language very well. Mm -hmm. And she was a very respectable lady. She was the mother of one of the, of, of the crucial protagonists. And uh, she came to tell me that after I left, um, the general came to the officers then another very influential general came, then the very next day they took him to the government palace and then they were promised that everything would be immediately, immediately uh, arranged in their favor. But that if the story came out and would put a blot on the army prestige and all of that, uh, then uh, no, that that would be impossible. That would be impossible to 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 do. So this lady came to implore in in the name of her son and the other soldiers for me not to release the story. Gustavo, you are a great influencer. You yeah. influence the society by the work you do, by the writing you do, by the reporting you do. We ask this question to every influencer, Gustavo. Yes. What is your word to the youth? My worth. Your word, if you have to tell something to the youth yes. as a oh. piece of advice, what would it be? Well, <laughs> I mean, I, I am an, an, an old cynic and, and I would say to, to the youth, uh -huh. uh, I was, once I was a young guy too. Correct. You will get old mm -hmm. eventually and uh, you will see some young guys are looking at you as uh, this old guy. Um, try to be consistent and uh, try to do in your life the kind of thing that when you are old, uh, the young guy couldn't be unhappy to see. If the young guy could have prophetic vision and, and saw himself when old, would say it was okay, you did well, you didn't do so bad. And uh, the thing is, uh, there are some good things that age brings to you. I mean, obviously experience uh, is uh, one of them. But uh, there are many things from uh, youth that you should never abandon. Never abandon. Mm -hmm. The passion, the integrity, uh, the, the, the belief that uh, good changes could be carried out, that uh, ambitious enterprises uh, should be uh, uh, taken on and continued. I think these are the kinds of things that you should never, I mean, and you should also try, keep trying. I mean, if, if you are strong and vigorous and give some, uh, uh, some value to it, and you should, you should keep doing that when you are old. And then repeat, as some personal trainers uh, uh, like to say, age is just a number. <laughs> It's, it, 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 it's, it's a valuable number. It's a valuable number, but... Um, wow, there are age is just not a number, it's a valuable number. Yeah, but there, are many, there are many ways to age. I mean, uh, you can age badly and uh, into an unhappy old age with gradual obscurity and weakening. Uh, and uh, just your uh, just takes you on, or you can be uh, try to do and be uh, strong and passionate 
and uh, you will remain healthy, you will remain a good, a good influence. And the good thing, I, I, I was reading this the other way, comparing the different ways in which you can age. Mm -hmm. If you age the way I was saying, uh, keeping passionately involved, exercising, thinking, and all of that, you live long and die short, die fast. Uh, in the other case, you live short and die long. Amazing, 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 Gustavo, amazing. Gustavo, the sentiment behind uh, my journey of driving into yes. 60 countries and meeting great personalities like you. Incidentally, Peru is our is my 55th country. Oh. Um, and great inspiring people like you who bring mm -hmm. immense change and progress to our lives. Gustavo, the sentiment behind this journey of mine is celebrate life. Mm -hmm. What according to you is celebrating life? Doing things like the one you're doing, um, <laughs> keeping, keeping involved with passion, with interest mm. into the things that are worthwhile mm. to do, to mm. live, mm. And, uh, and, and creating, trying to make the world a slightly better place, enjoying beauty. Uh, I mean, taking not just an intellectual uh, or a practical approach to life, but also an aesthetic one, trying to live this world not just a better, but a more beautiful place. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the, this is a difficult world, but at the same time, it has many, many things to offer. So, and you can do it in so many different ways. You can wanderlust uh, uh, is uh, throughout history has proven to be a magnificent way of getting to know all kinds of peoples and, okay. uh, and, and all of that. But then you can stay like uh, the great philosopher Immanuel Kant did in his own city of Kennisberg. Uh, all of uh, his life, I mean, so that and having such a settled habit that people knew the time of the hour when they saw good old Dr. Kant uh, go by. But at the same time, he opened up new universes in terms of thinking and thought. So there are many ways, there are many ways, but um, there should be this kind of positive ways. Live the world better than it was before. Live the world better than it was before, correct. Thank you so much, Gustavo. Thank you for your time once again. Once again, thank you for your time.